Welcome back, everyone. The White House effectively turning down an invitation by Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell for President Obama to visit his members on Capitol Hill on Thursday to discuss raising the U.S. debt limit. White House Press Secretary Jay Carney saying Obama did not need to hear Republicans tell him what they would not support. Sally Cohn, founder of MovementVision.org, Ben Ferguson, radio talk show host, are my uh, guests to debate this right now. Uh, Sally, is it a little disingenuous to come to the podium yesterday and smack down Republicans when, in fact, uh, the president played golf two times the weekend before and is going to two fundraisers tonight? Uh, no, not at all, Gretchen. Uh, first of all, uh, the president can do more than two things at a time. He can work on raising money for his reelection, and he can work about worry about reviving the American economy. The irony here is that Republicans uh, are only worrying about the next election and willing to sacrifice our nation's economy, the future uh, of our entire uh, economic security, to make get, try and gain political points. Uh, ben, I, I just want to bring to note that at this time in George W. Bush's administration, he had only had six campaign events. Your response? Yeah, well, you know, I, this is what's funny is I love how she says Republicans are worried about the election. Look at the president's schedule. He plays golf. He goes on a campaign swing. He goes on another campaign swing. He's AWOL on negotiations for the new budget and also the debt limit, yet he says it's a vitally important to the United States of America. He fear mongers on the issue today and yesterday, yet it's more important for him to raise money for re-election than it is to go sit down with Republicans who he has to work with, he has to make a deal with. But at the same time, you have Harry Reid come out and say, we're going to work on Tuesday after the 4th of Ju July. Guess what? So is every other American. I'm not going to pat you on the back <laughs> acting like you're doing something. I'm going to work Tuesday. You're probably going to work Tuesday, and so is everybody else. Yeah, let's hope they get something done, actually. Uh, I want you to listen to this particular snippet of the president when he talked about corporate jets and the tax. He mentioned it six times yesterday. Listen to this. <laughs> the tax cuts I'm proposing we get rid of are tax breaks for millionaires and billionaires, tax breaks for oil companies and hedge fund managers, and corporate jet owners. And before we ask our seniors to pay more for health care, before we cut our children's education, before we sacrifice our commitment to the research and innovation that will help create more jobs in the economy, I think it's only fair to ask an oil company or a corporate jet owner that has done so well to give up that tax break that no other business enjoys. But here's the thing, Sally, when you add it all up over 10 years, you know how much that tax break, you know how much money that would give towards the deficit? It's Only $3 billion. So it wouldn't even pay for that many student loans, which, by the way, cost $42 billion. You're, you're, you're just focusing on the corporate jet exemption and not all of the uh, uh, tax uh, well, that's cutting of tax breaks on. that he's... You no, know, he was also talking about raising taxes on millionaires and billionaires. And let's be he clear... The, the corporate jet the six he, times. He, it was his talking point. Look, let's be clear. The American people get that this isn't about corporate jets. This is about choices. Our economy is in a really bad situation, and we have to decide who's going to take the pain here. Are we going to have a pinprick uh, for a few millionaires and billionaires, or are we going to have a yeah, knife but, wound, but again, a knife but, but this is the ben, class. Ben, ben, again, it seems to be somewhat disingenuous because, in fact, the president not only wants tax increases for millionaires and billionaires, but, but for all Americans making more than $250,000 a year. They are not millionaires it's and called, billionaires. It's called campaigning. Look at what he did in his speech yesterday. He wasn't trying to fix America's problems. He was trying to campaign and say, the Republicans are evil and I'm a good guy. The Republicans want people to make money, and I want rich people to pay more money. This didn't fix the problems. It wasn't bipartisan. And when he said it's time for rich people to, quote, unquote, pay their fair share, 50 percent of all taxes we collect in this, company, in this country come from the top 2 percent of wage earners. Right. They're paying more than their fair so share. But you, you know what? If you're Obama, that? you're campaigning. How can you because shake your head at that? Because, that is a known fact. Because whether you agree, first of all, corporate tax receipts and, and uh, tax receipts from the rich are at an all-time low. And let's be clear that every time uh, Democrats have talked about raising taxes, Republicans have cried wolf. The last time we did it was under Bill Clinton, and we had record economic growth. Now, look, you may not like it. You may not like it. But the fact is, we're right. in a pickle. What are we going to do? You yeah, want to cut benefits? Well, guess what? You want to cut benefits for seniors? I, I'm in a bit problem. of a pickle with you time. Have a I'm in a bit of a pickle with time, unfortunately, Sally and Ben, uh, with all the breaking news coming out of Florida. Thanks so much for your thoughts today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. The defense